I think the first time I remember knowing something was kind of different than my friends uh, was when I went to the ER um, when I was 14. I, you know, was doubled over. I could barely walk. Um, I always had really bad period cramps. For me, it's been painful, painful periods um, throughout the month. Um, my body goes into shock, and when the nausea and vomiting starts, I often... The level of exhaustion and fatigue was getting worse and worse. I don't know how to say this without, like, TMI, but, like, taking a dump, right? <laughs> that hurts, like, it feels like someone's ripping out your uterus. When you're 12, 13, it's super embarrassing to talk about, so you don't know what's bad and what's not. In a lot of privacy, I would say, you know, I have this disease, it's called endometriosis, and, it, you know, the always the answer would be, and a what? Endometriosis is a estrogen-dependent chronic inflammatory disease that affects women in reproductive age, and it's associated with severe pelvic pain, loss of quality of life, and subfertility. At least 10% of the uh, women in reproductive age are affected by the disease. That's around 10 million. It took eight years until I found a doctor that listened and was able to make a diagnosis. I was never misdiagnosed, I just wasn't giving a clear diagnosis. It was always either PMS or we think it could be endometriosis. I went into the ER when I was 14. I was diagnosed when I was 35. An entire person could have grown up and legally bought alcohol in the time it took for me to get diagnosed. The attending said, I think it's, you know, we've done, a, we've done an exam, we think it's serious, it might be cancer of the appendix, and I kind of laughed it out and felt like, okay, you really don't, you're not listening to me, <laughs> you're not hearing what I'm telling you, it's probably the endometriosis. And I left out of there with a potential diagnosis of cancer and no relief for my pain. It takes about a decade to diagnose endometriosis there are many reasons for delayed diagnosis. I think the most important thing is lack of awareness, lack of knowledge about the disease. Many patients are initially misdiagnosed and diagnosed as something else. I just feel like sometimes I've been dismissed when I discuss my pain. I think that may be why a lot of women probably don't speak up because they just feel like, uh, oh, she's just complaining, like you get it every month, get over it. I still remember this feeling. I just felt like I had wasted everybody's time. It was my first OBGYN appointment ever. And I said, I have a lot of trouble with my period. I have intense pain. I think I might have endometriosis. I've done a lot of research. And this doctor, without having examined me, she said, I have a patient with endometriosis, and there's no way your pain is as bad as hers is. So you probably don't have it. And I was, it was just such a quick dismissal of my plea for help. I knew that that wasn't right. How many different doctors did I go to? I went to a couple of gastroenterologists. This kinesiologist and nutritionist. I've tried to see gynecologists. Two different internists. I've tried uh, to see gastroenterologists. I've tried to see um, urologists. I have patients who have had 40 endoscopies. IBS seems to be a main uh, part of misdiagnosis. Actually, the inflammation is outside the bowel, affecting the bowel in an indirect way. Definitely there was a focus on there must be something wrong with her digestive system. No one ever really asked me if the pain was associated with my period. People don't really ask that question. Is it associated with your period? Simple question. If that question is asked from the get-go, the disease can be treated very early before it destructs uh, the capacity and function of many organs. They couldn't figure out where the blood was coming from, and they had to open me up and do an exploratory surgery to figure out what the hell was going on. Turns out it was just a big old mass of endometriosis that had been sitting in the end of my small intestine for 21 years. 
there's serious anxiety and depression. The disease mentally, psychologically, in the end, if they're, it's not recognized, if a woman feels dismissed, that really brings loss of quality of life that reflects to work productivity. I've had to accept that there are just days, one to two days per month, where I might be completely unable to do anything. When I was in high school, like there were days I couldn't go to school. Like I would be in the bed, hulk, like bent over, can't move. Even with work, like you can't call out of work and be like, I'm having period pain. Like no one's gonna just let you call out of work for period pain. But it's like, that's how, you don't understand. I can't move. I remember an executive producer saying to me, you're a great reporter, but you're unreliable. That, that was actually the hardest part. It really made me doubt myself as a professional. I thought maybe I was weak, maybe I wasn't committed enough, and maybe I just had to work through it. I feel like if this happened to men, there would be something done about this. There's no way they could deal with this level of pain. There's a lot of evidence by now of gender biases in healthcare where women in general are not being heard when they talk about their symptoms. But in endometriosis, I think it's a little bit more uh, exacerbated because we're talking about symptoms that are related to period and vague symptoms like pain and fatigue. And so there's this very strong feeling amongst the patient of just not being heard no matter what. The sexism in this stuff is just rampant. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to separate out what is someone being sort of a casual sexist to a teenage girl versus miseducation versus your regular old gynecologist not being a specialist in this, which is sort of absurd given the number of women who are affected by endometriosis. And endometriosis we now know can be passed genetically, but a lot of our mothers may have never even been really aware of what they were going through, if it was abnormal, you know, if they were even registering the pain that could have been happening in their body because they weren't really allowed to think about it or talk about it. Endometriosis is just now on the radar. Like we're just now seeing commercials about like, oh yeah, this is one of the leading pains that women have. I think that awareness of endo has, has grown tremendously. But I also think doctors just know more. The celebrities who lend their name to the disease, I think has had tremendous effect for disease recognition and ex acceptance by public Padma Lakshmi. She has really done so much and she's still doing it. It's a cause that's about as dear to my heart as it's possible to be. Women. I think the first time I remember of endo has, has grown. For disease recognition and ex acceptance by public Padma Lakshmi. She has really done so much and she's still doing it. It's a cause that's about as dear to my heart as it's possible to be. Women don't have to suffer. And the minute I became public about it, I realized just how many women it affected and just how deeply it affected them. Lena Dunham relentlessly shared her pain agony with blogs, public speaking. Every time I see an article of somebody famous talking about endometriosis, I cry. You see someone else, like your favorite celebrity or some influencer, like, hey, I'm having this issue, it creates a whole dialogue. And hopefully with that can come the research and better options. There is more and more of a really powerful advocacy voice and patient voice present. It's happening in the United States, it's happening throughout the world. You have to advocate for yourself. Something is bothering you, be firm about what you want or the type of doctor that you want to see or the type of procedure that you want. The old paradigm was people only talked about endometriosis as it affected fertility. Now we talk about it in terms of how it affects your work life your pain level, your ability to just like be a person. You know, we're not just baby makers, we're actual people with pain. That I think is a paradigm shift over the last probably 20 years.
Mallory Smith grew up in Los Angeles.